Hi, I'm Ben Adams. I'm going to show you basic data acquisition using LabVIEW. This video tutorial is for ME4031 students here at the University of Minnesota. Prerequisites for this video tutorial that you have LabVIEW 2010 installed in your computer. I'm going to use a USB 6009 to acquire my voltage values. You need the appropriate DAQMX drivers installed. And I'm going to use a 10K potentiometer to simulate voltage values. First of all, I'm going to show the difference between differential and single data measurements, then do a very simple data acquisition using LabVIEW, then introduce the waveform data type, which accumulates voltage values with time using loops and shift registers, eventually writing that data to a file. The DAQ is capable of making both differential and single ended measurements. Differential measurements are represented by the sticker on top, single ended by the sticker on the bottom, meaning you pick which one you want to make. Every voltage measurement is differential in nature, however, the negative terminal of what you're trying to measure is oftentimes connected to ground. So if you measure just the positive pin in reference to ground, you can get the same voltage and the values that you need. This allows you to use half the pins, which lets you use, make twice as many measurements with the same device. The potentiometer I'm going to use to simulate the voltage is just a variable resistor. The wiper pin on the middle varies in resistance with, with the ground pin. So that voltage that's going to come out over here when it's connected between 0 and 5 volts is going to vary between 0 and 5 volts. I connected that to pin AI2 on the DAQ. Shown like this, the ground is on this side, plus 5 on this side, and the middle wiper pin I have connected up here to AI2, which is a single ended measurement. Going over to LabVIEW, I'm going to take a voltage value in, which is so I need to use my DAQ assistant. I'm going to acquire a voltage from the 6009 using pin AI2. And remember, it's going to be a single-ended measurement, RSE. I'm just going to take 10 samples and do that at a rate of 100 hertz. So it's going to take one-tenth of a second to collect all 10 of those voltage values. A very simple way I can just show the voltages it's collected is just to use an a numeric indicator on the front panel. It'll just show the first voltage value that it's collected. Right click, numeric indicator. Just wire that up over here. And if I run this, you see the first voltage value is 3.85 volts. That's fine if that's all you need, but often you need to collect a series of voltage values with time. So I'm going to get rid of him. Control B to clean up the broken wires. First of all, we need to get out of this dynamic data type. So I'm going to right click, go to the Sigma NIP palette, go from dynamic data. And we're going to use something called a single a waveform, a single waveform. So I'm going to connect that to the data out. A waveform is made up of three things. If I go to the waveform palette, you see you get the waveform components here. And I expand that. You can see it has three things. T0 is the initial time when data collection started happening. DT is the time step between samples that it took, and Y are the actual voltage values. So Y is an array of all the voltages that it collected. So if I run this once, you see it has all 10 voltages here, the 10 millisecond timestamp between that, and then it shows the initial time when voltages started being collected. I can also go over here and I can add a waveform chart to the front panel, which is just going to plot this. And just connect it here to the waveform, run it once, and you see it now has those 10 voltage values and it plots them over here, just the X is scaled funny. You probably want to do this more than once though to collect voltage values with time, so we're just going to get rid of this. The way we're going to accumulate those voltages is by doing this more than once using a while loop. So draw it around there. A while loop has a condition, which is when it ends, so I right click and I'll create control that adds a stop button to the front panel, a, a boolean. Now the way we're going to accumulate each of these values is by making a waveform data type that has all of the values in it, not just the 10. When this loop iterates, it'll just collect 10 voltage values and then output, output them to the chart. And then the next iteration, it won't remember anything that it had done on the previous iteration. The way you make it remember is by adding something called the shift register. On this side, we have the value from the previous iteration. And on this side, we have what you feed to the next iteration of the loop. So this is going to be our waveform. We're going to build, we have to initialize it, so we have to build our initial waveform, which is just going to have nothing in it. So why are the voltage values? I'm just going to create a constant, but we're just going to leave that in the uh, zero state. DT is going to be 10 milliseconds between samples, and for the, for the time, initial time, I'm actually going to use timing, get date time when the program starts running. Put that inside there feed that up over here. 
So now what we want to do is we want to append these newly acquired data types to what is already there. There's a block in the waveform called append. This looks like him. If you look at context help, you see it appends B to the end of A. So we want to start with A, append B to it, and output that resulting value to the next iteration of the loop. We don't want to display, display just those 10 values we collected anymore. Instead, we want to display the accumulated values. So I'm going to wire it to there, do a control B to clean that up. Now when we run it, you see it's going to collect the voltage values with time. I want to scale this different. Oh, got to turn off auto scale Y. I know my potentiometer is going to output between 0 and 5 volts. So if I just, you can see I'm just moving the potentiometer now. All right, stop. Now you probably want to export these resulting voltage and time values to say Excel or a spreadsheet. So you can use a block under waveform called waveform file IO export to spreadsheet. Wire that into the waveform. See context help tells you you can feed it the file name or it'll just ask you if there is none. And by default, the delimiter is the tab. However, I want to make this a CSV file so the delimiter needs to be a comma. I'm going to run this again. It collects the voltage values. I push stop. Now it's going to ask me for file name, data, and it saves it. All right. Now you might just want this loop just to happen for a certain number of times. So say you want to collect five seconds worth of data. There's a block that tells you how much data you have collected under waveform called waveform duration. We hook that up to our waveform, it'll tell us. And the duration here is how long that it's been collecting data. So if we compare that value see if, to see if it's greater than or equal to, say, 5, it'll return a true. Or if the stop button is pushed, then we want the while loop to stop. So what the, that'll do now is it'll run. It'll take five seconds worth of data. When it's done taking data, it's going to stop the while loop and end up over here where it asks us for a file name to save that data to. Yeah. Likewise, you can just save the data by just right clicking on the plot and just going export data to Excel. And then it's just going to show you the same data that it uses to make that plot over there, the time and voltage data. It's just a different way to do it. All right, do a control U to clean up that block diagram. And one other thing, say you don't want the data to start collecting immediately, say you want to have time to uh, put some equipment on or something like that. There's several ways to do that. Uh, one way is to use a for loop, which is what I'm going to do. I draw a for loop there. Say we want the for loop to loop five times, and each time it loops, I want it to take 1,000 milliseconds per iteration. I'm going to add to the front panel here some indicator, say a tank. Now if I subtract, if I subtract the total number and the current iteration that the loop is on and split and write that to the tank, it's going to count down from five down to zero as this thing keeps looping. If you look at this block diagram though, this top part here is dependent on nothing from this bottom part here, so they'll actually both try and run at the same time. We don't want that uh, because we want this to start collecting data after this is run. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one piece and make the top part dependent on this bottom part completing. So I'm going to take that block, that initial time step, and wire him down there. You see by, uh, by default it tries to make an array out of all the time step values from each iteration. I don't want that though, I'm just going to pass a single scalar value out and feed that up to the top. Now when I run this, it's going to count down from 5. Once it gets to the bottom, it's going to take 5 seconds worth of data. I'll move the potentiometer here, collecting some data. And when it's done, it's going to ask you for file name, and you can save it. Other variations, you can actually collect more than one voltage value from a different channel uh, during this loop here. You can't just put a second DAQ ass assistant here though because they'll both be fighting for the same resource and it'll give you an error. Instead you have to change 
configure inside this DAQ assistant, and then use indexing to piece apart the waveforms as they come out of an array of waveforms. I cover that partially in the thermistor acquiring data, which is also a YouTube video. Good luck.